For those of you that have seen my top 10 favorite Disney movies video, you know I love Zootopia. Then I got to thinking, why do I like it so much? And then it hit me. It is a lot like my other favorite animated movie of all time, Cats Don't Dance. Seriously though, there are so many similarities between this movie and Zootopia that if the director of Zootopia said he never even saw this movie, I would not believe him. You don't believe me? Well, let's go over the points then. Wide-eyed protagonist leaves a small town to go to the big city to fulfill his or her dream? Check. Only to arrive there to find out there's rampant racism? Check. Teaming up with a dissolution partner of the opposite sex? Check. Villain is a very small, innocent-looking creature that other people don't think could possibly be evil? Check. Now that's not me saying that Zootopia is a bad movie or a ripoff or something like that. No, far from it. It's actually, you know, it's my favorite Disney movie of all time. But there are a lot of similarities. But the question is, who did it better? Well, let's find out. So today we'll do Zootopia versus Catstone Dance and find out who did this idea better. Nothing's gonna stop us. Nothing's gonna stop us. Nothing's gonna stop us now. This is true for pretty much every movie. If you don't have a good lead, then your movie is gonna be pretty terrible because no one's gonna care what's going on. So right off the bat, let's start with main characters. First up, Cats Don't Dance. Danny is one of the happiest protagonists I have ever seen in an animated movie. He is always excited. He is always energetic. He's always convincing people to do better. They can fulfill their dreams. He is the epitome of the you can do it attitude. And he hardly ever shows any negative emotions unless really bad shit happens. But if you need to pick me up, you talk to this guy. Sawyer, on the other hand, is the complete opposite. She is completely disillusioned from her time in the city. She knows how the world works, and she's pretty much come to accept it, and is now just working as an assistant, even though her dream is to dance and sing. She's pretty much like, you know what? Fuck it, I, there's nothing I can do. So when these two team up, it's a really good balance. You got the super excited new guy, and the disillusioned girl who's been there for a long time, but still has her passion and her talent. They're just hidden away. So together... They work pretty well. One of the really funny things is with Zootopia is that you can pretty much just take guy and switch it for girl and becoming a singer or actor and replace that with doing good or being a police officer and that's pretty much the same thing I just said. Next up, Zootopia. Now get ready for a twist. Instead of a disillusioned girl and excitable guy, you have an excitable girl and disillusioned guy. Holy crap. Uh, crazy, you know? In fact, in my mind, it's very hard to differentiate these two pairs of main characters at times because there are very similar plot points that they come across. But I have to pick a winner of the two. So, okay. Between the two of them, Castle and Dance, I love Danny and Sawyer. I think they're great characters. The only thing that feels a little weak at times is their connection. I can tell they're starting to get more and more connected and feel more for each other as the story goes on. But then they get into a big argument, and there's never really a reconciliation for their argument. Kind of just a, oh, well, you made it better, so everything's okay. While in Zootopia, there was a really emotional scene when the main happy character actually realizes that she was a shithead and goes over and apologizes immensely until the other character finally accepts her apology and becomes her friend again. There was never really a scene with that in Cast Stone Dance. It was kind of just a, oh, I fucked up. Oh, now I'm back to fix everything. Yay! There, there was never an apology scene, and that always kind of bothered me. While I love Danny and Sawyer and Cat Stone Dance, and it's been my favorite movie for like 15 plus years, I feel like Judy and Nick have a little more character development between the two of them, and it feels a little more real. The relationship feels a little more genuine. So unfortunately, I gotta give main characters to Zootopia. Next, you got something that's usually very important to an animated movie, the music. True, Zootopia isn't a musical per se, but music still can make or break your movie. Music is so important to any movie, whether it be animated or otherwise. Even if it's not a musical, the music gets you pumped, it makes you feel. It's very, very important. I'm not going to play the Zootopia music because Disney is notorious for taking down videos with their music in it. So listen to me and my terrible uh, version of it. I messed up tonight. I lost another yeah, fight. I still made cut. Zootopia's music really puts you in the mood. 
while Castone Dance Music is indicative of what it is, which is a musical. Castone Dance Music feels a little more timeless. It takes place in the 30s, but it was made in the 90s, so they kind of had to work the music together. But the musicals never feel intrusive. Like, the music numbers never feel like they're ruining the story, like a lot of musicals do. It feels like it's a necessary part of the story, and it moves the story along, as well as being very good music. Zootopia uses more, like, poppy songs. It works in the movie, and Shakira's great in it. But I feel like the music in Catstone Dance really adds more to it. And also, the choreography for the dances was done by Gene Kelly. And Gene Kelly is like a legend of dancing. And it really added to the musical numbers too. So when it all boils down to it, I know this isn't a surprise, but I gotta give the music award to the musical. So this point goes to Catstone Dance. Boy, and twins, You know fly. What is a movie with main characters without a villain? Spoiler warning, we're going to find out who is a better villain. Darla Dimple or Mayor Bellwether? There's actually a spot where the two movies differentiate. In Zootopia, you got a shock villain. But in Cast of Dance, you pretty much know that Darla Dimple's evil from second one. I mean, the very first time you see Darla, she's basically calling her butler to kick the shit out of Danny. While Bellwether is more like, oh, I want to be your friend and help you out before BAM! I'm fucking evil! In fact, one of the biggest differences between the two movies in terms of villains is that in Zootopia, they're not expecting her to be a villain because they have no reason to believe she would be a villain, that she's nothing but help them. In Cast of Dance... Danny is a little too gullible. I mean, he should have seen the fact that she'd be evil. I mean, the first time they meet, she's a complete asshole. And he's just like, okay. I mean, the scene pretty much goes like, I just want to help you. You can trust me. There is no reason I should trust you. Then I will sing a song. One song later. Well, that was a great song. I completely trust you. Bye. To be fair, you can't really blame Darla for that. That's more Danny being a dumbass. Not really her fault that he believed her. But, you know, you gotta admit, that's pretty badass that the first time they meet, he she can have, like, her butler come and kick the shit out of him. And then she just comes back and goes, no, 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 I was having a really bad day. That's not normally me. Come on. I'll be your friend. And, like, he believes her. So, that's pretty awesome she's able to convince him that she's a good guy after all that. That's pretty badass on Darla's part. One of the reasons I like Darla's motivations better for the movie is because Mayor Bellwether's motivations is that extremely generic motivation to... Try to take over the world. The thing with Darla is she couldn't give a shit about what other people are doing. She only cares about herself. She cares about her world and her fame and her money. And if anybody gets in the way of that, then they're fucking going down. However, Mayor Bellwether is more like, oh, I'm going to take over the city and then the world. While Darla's like, I just want to be popular and famous and be awesome because that's me i'm darla she got like a gaston thing going on and i can kind of respect that more because it is less used trope than i'm gonna try to take over the world and really how often do you see like a six-year-old girl be the villain and act like a real spoiled brat as opposed to being like a demonic like omen child it's really cool to see it and see like the older characters be the good guys and the younger bitch girl be the villain that's pretty cool i don't see that very often at all and i like that Trust me, I think Mayor Bellwether is a good villain, and the first time I saw the movie, I didn't expect it. I did not see her being the villain at all. I thought it was a pretty cool twist. But if you couldn't guess by now, I gotta give the point to Darla Dimple, because I felt she was such a hilarious villain. She was this cool Shirley Temple knockoff, and making her the villain said the sweet little girl was hilarious in every aspect, and I enjoyed every moment she was on the screen, even though she's being the crazy bitch. And that just made it even better. And, her, and the fact that she did herself in at the end also kind of like mayor bellwether even just added to it so i gotta give the point for best villain to cats don't dance now we get to a very interesting part which the point is going for the feels this is how the movie makes you feel if it makes you all like choked up inside or if it tells a story well and they both dealt with racism with animals which is actually a really hard topic to do but i think they both did it really well so the question is which movie made me feel the feels more 
this one is very interesting because they're both great in their own regard. Like, Cast Don't Dance had a great moral, had a great ending. I really felt for Danny. At the end, I felt really bad and sad when he was alone on stage by himself. But Zootopia, I felt more connected to them and I could feel like they were real people. This is going to be a rough one. They both have really good pacing, really good comedy, really good flow. So the deciding factor for me had to come down to the sad parts because they tie for the other things. So I have to make a choice based on how sad these scenes are. I don't want to make this decision. Okay. It's really hard because I love Danny's speech at the end to everybody behind stage and they get, and they get the yeah, let's do it attitude. And I love the Judy and Nick scene where Judy makes it up to Nick for being such a racist douchebag. And they're both so great. They're such great scenes full of power and I get a little bit like shivery every time I watch either of them. But I gotta pick one. Okay. While I love both scenes to death and they're some of my favorite scenes in cinema ever... The scene that got me more, and I really wanted to see more. I gotta give the Feels Award to Zootopia. I love that scene from Cast Don't Dance, but goddamn it, that bridge scene from Zootopia. The bridge scene from Zootopia. Just take it. Take the point. Go. And so here we are. Two to two. Normally, I would use the animation to finish this off, but I really can't compare the two. It's like comparing apples to oranges. Zootopia has revolutionary new 3D, but Cast Don't Dance has some of the most fluid, nice-looking 2D animation I've ever seen. Because there's absolutely no way for me to compare them, and this is one of the rare times this is going to happen, animation's a tie. Sure, main characters and villains, all well and good, but you can't really have a movie with just three characters. You need to have other people, side characters, that help bring the world to life. So, for the winning point, we'll decide who had the better supporting cast. Zootopia or Cast Don't Dance. <laughs> Now, Zootopia prided itself on making these hundreds of characters in the background that were all doing different things and had their own story going on. But in terms of main side characters, you had maybe like 7 to 10. You had the fat uh, cop, you had the main cop, you had the mayor, you had a few others. You had like 7 to 10. Well, Castle of Dance... You also had around seven side characters. You had Max, you had the turtle, you had the goat, you had the fish. You had like seven to eight side characters. So they had the, about the same amount of main side characters. But really, who was more likable and who added more to the story? Catstone Dance really excelled in the side characters. It only had a few and it had just enough for you to get to know them and get to really like them. In fact, I don't think there's a single side character I don't like in this movie. While like I feel in Zootopia, a lot of the characters are less characters and more like archetypes of the types of people that exist in the city, which is also very good, just in a different way. When it comes to Zootopia, their side characters are literally just that. They're side characters. Really, Judy and Nick's story doesn't really affect them in terms of like them coming in to help. They're kind of just there. They're on the side, hence side characters. Cast Don't Dance, they start out on the side, but their fate becomes intertwined with the main characters, and they actually have to come together with the main character to solve the problem. They, he can't do it without them, which makes them part of the overall main story, which I think is actually really good writing. Zootopia so does have some great characters that I think is hilarious, like Clawhauser, Shakira's character, the commander, Water, Bison... But honestly, for once, this is not that hard of a choice for me. Because the way they intertwined the side characters to be useful at the end and really become part of the story was fantastic. And they, at least Castle Dance doesn't have that stupid shrew godfather crap that was ridiculous. So honestly, for me, I gotta give the final point 
to Cast Don't Dance. Nothing's gonna stop us. Nothing's gonna stop us. Nothing's gonna stop us. So barely pulling it out with a four to three, Cats Don't Dance takes it. Oh man, that was close. The fact that Zootopia was able to come so close to my favorite movie of all time, which has been my favorite movie since 1997, is speaks amazing to the quality that Disney can make now. Because I would never have thought a Disney movie could even come close to Cats Don't Dance. And for the longest time, it couldn't until Zootopia. But the fact that they can make these movies is just... It warms my heart and makes me feel like Disney's going to be okay. They're not all going to be Cars 3s or Finding Dories or reboots of Incredible Hulks or whatever. They're actually going to be working on original good movies. And that really makes me happy they're still doing that. I really wish they'd bring it back a little bit 2D. Like, I love Princess and the Frog and you never see their 2D anymore, but what are you going to do? There's really no losers in this competition. There's two big winners. Just... If Zootopia is a 10, Cast Don't Dance is a 10.1. Just because Cast Don't Dance to me is a little better, but not by much. It's really close. So, if there's any other movies you'd like me to compare or talk about, put it in the comments below. And if you could like and subscribe, that'd be great, because that way I could let I could hear what you guys want me to talk about, because I have a lot I could talk about. I know a lot of movies, especially animated ones. But yeah, so thank you all for watching, and... Till next time, I'll see you later. And if you haven't seen these movies, go watch them. What are you doing? Look for me where there's the smell of danger. The smell of danger is my middle name. I've been very quiet, but I've got a lot to say. Believe me. You ain't going with us and stay out of our way.